I'm so excited to, to be with you all here uh, this morning. Now, if you were with us last week, you saw that we kicked off our 21 day of, days of prayer series, uh, which um, meant that we are being intentional about giving something up in our lives to get more time to spend with God each and every day. We were saying that you need, uh, we, were, we were encouraging you to have a plan, know when and where and what you're going to do for your God time each day. We're encouraging you to write it down once, or to, to listen, first listen. Uh, listen, not just sit there and talk and talk and talk to the Lord, but actually sit and, and, and rest and, and just listen to what he has to say. Then we want you to write it down. We want you to write down what you're praying about. We want you to write down what the Lord is telling you about it. And we want you to, to, to write down like what, he, uh, what has happened because of these prayers and these things that you've been doing. And then the last thing that we, we we're encouraging you all to do during this time is to find a prayer partner, somebody to share these things with, somebody to talk through these things with uh, about, because um, it, it's so important for us to be, to have that person to, to share with, uh, to be praying along with you, praying for you, and then for you to be praying with them. So if you've started that, uh, that's great. I hope it's going well for you. If you haven't gotten it started yet, it's okay. You can get started today. It's totally cool. Uh, it's never too late to start spending time with God. Now, the other thing that we got into uh, this year or last week was the word for our year. You know, each and every year we're like, there's a word that God's given to us that's going to help us move throughout the rest of the year. It's going to help us focus on what we're doing. And, and this year it's community. And I mean, so here's the thing. Here at Akuo, we've always been about community, right? Like it's, it's, it's in our mission statement. Uh, we exist to be in church or to be in community with Jesus and one another, right? So that's, that's who we are. That's what we exist for. And uh, we've built an amazing culture of that as seen by like, we have these moments during service where y'all are like wanting to talk and you're annoyed when I come up and I'm like, hey, let's everybody stop talking and listen to me talk for a while, right? And you're like, oh God, this guy, right? Well, you know, like, so, so I get it. Like we've built this amazing culture where we love each other and appreciate one another. And when new people come in, uh, they're accepted and they're, they're brought in and they're loved. Of, right? And so we have this great uh, um, culture of, of community. But even with that, there are some ways that we can be a little bit more intentional about some of the things that we're doing. Uh, the scripture that, that I kept on going back to during this time is God gave uh, this word to me. Uh, came from uh, the historical writings of Luke. And, and so here's what Luke recorded about the first believers and what they were doing as they were getting into community. Uh, he writes here in Acts 2, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over them, and all the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who are being saved. So, so in this whole section, there's a word that, that just kind of kept on like flashing at me, you know, like it, it, it comes up a few times in there, and it's this word fellowship. So to, to get a little bit deeper into that word, uh, in the New Testament, for, for those of you that don't know, it's, uh, we get our English translation coming from Greek. And so sometimes it helps to get a better understanding of that word. So when you look at the Greek, it's uh, koinonia. And, and so it, it just means the close association between people, emphasizing what is common between them. So they're, they're finding these, these ways that they're, they're in in step with one another, right? They're doing these things where it's like, oh, we got this in common. We got this in common, right? Like, oh, I see that. You got the orange shoes on today. That's pretty cool, right? Like, I'm, I'm already noticing, like, my orange shoe people out there, right? Cowboy shirts, what's up, you know? Like, I'm, I'm seeing all these, these things instead of being like, oh, man, whatever, like, Yankees cap. I don't like the Yankees. I'm a Braves fan. You know, like, whatever. I'm not, I'm not like, you know, I'm not trying to find the things that making us different, but rather trying to find the things that make us the same. So that's the fellowship. They're connecting on their commonalities. They're, they are purposefully looking at the people in their group and not looking at how they differ, but how they're the same. It's about building this common ground and then working together from there, working together for the gospel, for what Jesus came for. And as I was studying about what we're going to be talking about today, uh, there was a kind of a, a story that, that made me start thinking about something. So uh, in, in December of 2022, uh, my, me and my family had the chance to take like a fantastic trip uh, to, to Disney World in Florida. 
right? And, and so uh, it, was, it was just so much fun, right? Like they, they, they said it was, I can go, and, and, and we took pictures all, all over the place and, you know, in front of the castle and, and, and did all those things. Um, and, you know, they said, like, look, you'll look really cool if you pose like this, right? <laughs> I don't, I was like, yeah, sure, I trust you guys. And then I have a picture where I look like that. Uh, but that's okay. Um, you know, so, so it, was, it was great. You know, we, we went out there. Here's the deal, though. It took us forever to save up enough money to go on a trip like this. Luckily, Lauren is like such a great planner and organizer of money and, and, and just, you know, we, we, we were able to sacrifice things and put stuff to the side. You know, it was amazing. So if you've ever been, it's a ton of fun and there are so many great attractions and like there are some incredible rides. Now, my son isn't always the most excited about like big, fast roller coaster type things. He gets a little nervous and a lot of times he'll just be like, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm like, you know, so then I have to like get on a roller coaster by myself, right? Uh, so, um, which I, I get, right? Like not everything is for everybody and, and I understand. But as we were making this trip, it was like, we're at Disney though, right? Like a lot of sacrifice put in, <laughs> a lot of things happen, we're, we're here. And so when we got there, I told him, I was like, hey, Papa, look, like, I, I get that you're scared uh, to get on some of these rides, but you got to remember, this might be a once-in-a-lifetime trip. This might be the only chance you ever get to experience this. You know, like, we've sacrificed a bunch. We came a long way. Let's, let's do this. Now, to his credit, he got on everything. Every single ride there he was ready to get on. He was ready to live out this huge moment. He was able to set aside all the discomfort that he might have felt and, and, and got on all the rides. Some weren't so great. He's like, I'm never getting on that again, right? But some of them, some of them he loved. These rides are some of the best things he's been able to do in his entire life, but he had to get past that discomfort first. So have y'all ever dealt with anything like this before? Have you ever had to push past an uncomfortable situation to get to some, something better? Maybe you saw like that famous person out, you know, out to eat and you're like, oh, dang, let me go ask him for a picture, right? Like there's that little bit of discomfort, but then you go over there and ask for the picture. Or maybe you had to show up for the interview for that job, right? Like you're a little uncomfortable showing up, but you went there and you got it now. Or maybe you had to reach out to that person to talk with them, to ask them out on that first date, right? Like, oh dang, you know, like that was, you, you had to like put yourself out there. We all have these situations that we find ourselves in where we are uncomfortable, but we know there might be something better for us on the other side. Sometimes we rise to the occasion and sometimes we fall. This happens everywhere in our lives, but I think there's a particular part of our lives where we are regularly falling short. And I think it's with our with our community. It's with our fellowship, the, the koinonia. We get worried to talk to that neighbor and offer that extra step to them, right? Oh man, I got this extra food. Let me ask, I'm going to text my neighbor. No, I'm not going to text them. To walk up to that parent of our friend's kid that we see like on the playground to start up that conversation. Like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to bother them. I don't want to talk to somebody today, you know? To, that, to reach out to that person standing in front of us and at the HEB. To invite that person uh, that we know from church to like come hang out with us. Oh, they're too busy. Like, I don't, I don't want to mess with them. I know that this kind of thing is where uh, the people of the early church that, that like Luke recorded, if they were seeing us and hearing these excuses they were giving, I think those people would look at us like we were crazy if we gave them those excuses for not building community. I think they would look at the world they lived in, they would understand the sacrifice that was made for them and for all of you. And they would say, y'all, this might be a once in a lifetime trip. This might be the only time you ever get to experience this. We didn't come all this way. This much hasn't been invested in sacrifice for us for us not to experience the community that Jesus wanted us to experience. And this one part of what we just read just keeps on jumping out at me. Uh, it's it, Acts 2, 44 and 45. It says, And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. 
They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Now here, I think we see a few things happening in this community. It says they shared everything that they had. Everything. And then it says they sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. Which makes me ask the question, right? Like, there's, or it makes me think there's just two separate things. If they shared everything that they had, and then they sell money, like, someone would be like, oh man, you know, it's, it's money and possessions. Like, no, these are two separate things that they are doing. And so it makes me ask that question here, like, we can get property and possessions and shared money, but like, what is this then? What is that first part? Well, I, I think there's, it, there's a, a couple of things. Um, that, that kind of come to mind in this. And both of them are so important when it comes to building community and building fellowship. The first one is time. The first one is time that you can be sharing, right? I mean, think about that. For us to be in fellowship with one another, we got to give each other some time. How can we find, find common ground with one another if we can't even find the time to do it? It could be a short amount of time here, like just saying hello, or it could be something a little bit bigger. But then when you give that time, make sure it's good time, that you're not just checking a box with folks that, you, that, that maybe you want, that want to spend some time with you in the community. This is the first step that you will need to be in community, to, to be in this kind of community that we're hoping to continue to build this year. This is the first thing that you can give someone in your community. This is where real fellowship starts. This is where real fellowship can happen. This is where the the koinonia can get started. And I get it, though. It can be a little weird, a little uncomfortable. It can be scary. But we came all this way. All of this was sacrificed for you. And this might be a a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. You can ask someone to spend some time with you, right? You can invite someone to grab some lunch or a coffee or someone to watch a Spurs game with you. They're starting to win now, guys, you know? It's fun. Now, to help you out, I want to make it a little bit easier. Uh, If you're here and you'd be willing to, like, meet up with somebody in here over the next few weeks, like, you're like, oh, man, I got some time. I think I could figure out my schedule over, like, the next month to hang out for, like, one hour with some folks here. Just, like, raise your hand if you're like, yeah, you know, I could do that. Okay, there, there are a couple people, a couple. All right, some more, some more. Cool. Well, well I want to tell you about this great thing we have going on called community groups. They're going to be getting started in February, and they meet once a week for about an hour, maybe some of them two, where you can get together with some folks. And, and so I'm, I'm being kind of serious, but not really. Uh, but just so you know, there are people here that are willing to hang out and have fellowship with you, right? So there, there are people around here that you can look at and see and be like, oh, dang, when I'm going, I'm bored. I don't have anybody to talk to. I, I want to hang out with somebody. Those people that raise their hands right now, those are some of the folks that you can reach out to and talk to. They'd, be, they'd love to, to hang out with you and hear what you got to say. Now, in addition to doing something like this or, or joining a community group, one of the other things that we have going on, uh, it, it, or, you know, if you're like, dang, I just, I want some fellowship. I want it to be now. I like being active. I want to do some stuff. I want to, to hang out with some people in, in kind of an active way. Uh, one of the things that you could do is, is be a part of one of our A-teams here at Akuo. Uh, because, y'all, we, things work every week. Like, stuff gets set up. You see things happen. Y'all walk in, and it, it's all ready to go, and it, it's great. And, and, and we appreciate everybody that shows up uh, to work hard. But, like, it's work, right? For instance, this week, a- Abel, what time did you get here this morning? 5 a.m. Abel was pretty much solo for most of the morning this morning. He got here at 5. He was working. It's really cold in here in the mornings. He's the guy that turned on the heater to make it, like, comfortable-ish, right? Like in the range of comfort. Uh, And and so he's in here working. I know Alyssa got here super early to help set up uh, for for cool kids to make sure that the the nursery's here and and going. And and so uh, putting in extra time, you know, and then I I haven't been here. Like I was all worried because I I didn't want to contaminate like every single thing that I touched today. So I just stayed in the back. And, And so even though church is set up every week, we could use some help. So if you're interested in helping, talk with 
Abel, talk with Zach, he's somewhere out there, and, and let them know that you're like, hey man, I, I want to come help. I, I'd love to be a part of one of these A teams. You can talk to Alyssa about being a part of the Cool Kids team. Uh, you know, just, just do any of these things. Now, here's something that, that might happen, though, when you start to spend time with some of these folks. You might find out some things about them that aren't that great. They might put the toilet paper the wrong way, right? Everybody knows it's like Sylvester Stallone. It goes over the top, right? Over the top. Yes. One. Thank you, Alyssa. Uh, you know, you might see that they, they prefer in and out to Whataburger, right? Like, pff, whatever. Or it, it might be something like, haha, joking, whatever. But it might be something really bad that you can't line up with somebody. Like, they might not cheer for the Cowboys. You know, like, really bad stuff like that. People that need extra prayer. But when you spend time with people that are the opposite of you, or that they do something that kind of goes against the ways that you normally operate, you need to give them another thing, which is like the second thing that I think that, that Luke is talking about when they shared everything. They gave everything to them. And that other thing is grace. Not you, Grace Watson, but like grace in general. Uh, you're going to need to forgive them for all the things that they are that don't line up with you. It's okay for people to be different than you. It's okay for them to not agree with you. And it's okay for you to be friends with them even though they aren't just like you. And even though you don't agree on everything, even big things, it's still okay for you to be friends with them. A very good friend of mine is an atheist Patriots fan that doesn't like tacos. And I'm like, dude, but we're great friends, right? He's like from the Northeast. And I'm like, what's your deal? And, and so, but he's a great friend of mine. We still find common ground. We still try and meet up regularly. And because of that, we have like this decades-long friendship. It's something that the, the leaders of the early church community were dealing with. Here's what uh, the Apostle Paul wrote to the folks in Ephesus, knowing that they're dealing with stuff like this. He said, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven knew. He knew. He knew someone was going to get mad at each other over all kinds of things. Because when people are together a lot, they're going to get on each other's nerves. They're going to do a thing that they disagree with. They're going to share an opinion that the other people don't like. And, and you all know this. because, And I know you know this because I guarantee you, those of you that's spent time with your family over the last few weeks, a little bit of extra time, you're like, this is your detox time from them right now, right? Like, you're like, dang, I need some space. You're trying to get away because you're, you're with them and you love them and you care for them, but you're also like, hey, I, I, need, I need a little bit of time. So instead of walking with bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, be kind, tenderhearted, graceful. In the same way that grace has been given to us, through Jesus. Now, I get it, though. To give this kind of grace, to allow people to, to step like this in, your, in our lives, it can be a little weird. It can be uncomfortable. It can even be scary. But we came all this way. All of this was sacrificed for you. This might be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So I want you to, to do this to help you out. Some of us have so much trouble with this. So let, I, I want you to, to practice saying this phrase out loud. Okay, just, so just repeat after me. It's okay. I forgive you. Let's try it again. Let's make sure that everybody said it out loud here. It's okay. I forgive you. I understand that that's some of the hardest words for some of us to say because it's like, but they did it wrong. They were the jerks about it. They were the ones that wronged me. Yeah, I know. That's what grace is. That's, grace is never given to anybody that deserves it. It's always given to somebody that doesn't deserve it. And guess what? You don't deserve any grace either. 
You've wronged people so many times over and over again. You've sinned against God, and, and, and you can't even count how many ways you've messed up with him. And yet you still get grace. And so it's our job to give that grace, especially when we're in community. Otherwise, we can't build community. We can't build this fellowship, this koinonia. Now, real quick, though, I always have to make this like aside when we talk about these things. If you're in a relationship of, of any kind where people are regularly crossing boundaries that you set up that are in unsafe ways, being graceful doesn't mean staying in an abusive situation. You can be graceful to someone from a distance. You can love them and share with them and, and be graceful to them, but also not place yourself in harm's way physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. Okay? So, like, I just, I just have to put that disclaimer out there, all right? So, we hit the two things, the, the two main things that, I, that we can give, but there's one more thing that Luke talked about. Right? He talked about resources. They, they sold. He explained how people sold property and possessions to give to people in the need. Y'all, that's the, a, a next level type of generosity and fellowship right here. People were not only giving what they had, but they were selling things that they, to get more to give. Now, I know that, that some of us in here are like, oh, like you're squirming a little bit. And I get it, because there, there are places, there are churches that have weaponized this scripture. I've heard people using this scripture to make people be like, give until it hurts. Sell whatever you got, get, at, get rid of it. Give this money, come on. This is the most important thing you got to be doing. This is, this is where you got to be given. But here's the deal, Akuo. I want you to know that in this community that we're talking about, in this, this church of, uh, at, of Acts, none of these people were forced to give. Nobody had their arm turned. Nobody was guilted into this. This is something that they decided to do on their own. This is something that they joyfully did. This is something that they wanted to do. The other part of it is, as we're reading through this, there's, there's not a percentage connected to it, right? There's not like a, hey, give this percent, and then you're given the right amount. Because giving is not only about a tithe. Sure, that's a great place to start. But when there is someone that you see and know and love, and they come up to you and they're like, dude, I need help. Your first move isn't to pull out your phone, open up the calculator app, and go, well, let me see what percentage I need to give you. That's not love. That's not it at all. But when that person comes up to you and they say, man, I need help, you go, cool, what do you need? And then you do it because you love them, because you're in community with them, because you share this koinonia with them. Right? You don't look at the percentage. You don't worry about any of these things. There's not a rule that says that you should take care of your friends. You do it because you love them. Y'all, Kuo, true generosity isn't about a tithe. True generosity isn't about a church. True generosity is about taking care of people. True generosity is about taking care of your community. Now, I get it, though. It can be a little weird to step out like that with your resources and help out somebody in your community. Sometimes it's not. They'll walk up to you and be like, hey, can I get some help? And you're like, yeah, sure. Other times you can see it, and you're like, should I step out? Should I help? can be a little uncomfortable. It can be scary. But y'all, we came all this way. A lot was sacrificed for you. And this might be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So today we want to do, 
we want to do something for you. To help you get your generosity going, we decided to do something that we have never done here to Kuo. We're going to do uh, what the folks in Acts did. We're going to gather our resources to get passed around uh, to people that need it. We're going to pass a plate around. Abel's, Abel's got it right here. But we're going to do a little different. Instead of you reaching in your wallet and putting some money in, we're going to pass this around and we're going to ask you to take a $20 bill out. Yeah. We're going to tell you to take a $20 bill out because we want you to be generous with it this week. We want you to see somebody in your life, be looking for somebody in your community to share this money with. It's up to you how this money gets spent. You could use it in making a meal for friends, buying hand warmers for someone that you know, joining in with other people to give something more, or you can throw it in with your own money to give to someone out there. It's totally up to you. Another option is, if you need it, keep it. That's what the church is here for. And so the hope in this is that we can take away that one barrier of you're like, dang, I don't, I don't have anything to give. What do I give? I don't know. If we can remove that one barrier, we can help you guys start to build community better. It can take away that fear. It can take away their awkwardness. And also after this, my hope is that every time you go and open up your wallet and you see a 20 in there, you think about this. You think about generosity. You think about giving to somebody else. And I get it. This can be scary. This can be weird. But y'all, we came all this way. All of this was sacrificed for us. And we want to share this. We want to be a community that practices koinonia. Now, you know, I want to encourage you, like, just to, to do what you, what you can with this. I'm like, I'm, this is, this, I'm so excited about this right now. I'm, I'm so fired up to hear about, oh, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited to see the kind of generosity that, that happens from this. So one of the things I want to ask you is, is if you have something that happens and, and you see God work through this $20 in a way that you weren't expecting, share it with one of us. Just let us know like, hey man, this crazy thing happened. This amazing story happened. Not to like pat yourself on the back, but to be like, I saw God work in this way. To shout about the goodness that he is. The way that he's blessed you the way that he blessed another person because you're a part of this community. And if somebody asks, like, hey, why? Why? <laughs> why are you giving me this cash? Explain to them who Jesus is. Explain to them what community looks like and explain to them that they are loved and cared for. We hope that you're building community, fellowship, koinonia. And we encourage you to walk out and do that in this world this week. Because somebody, again, might be asking, why do you do this? And you go, this community. You can explain to them 
that to be fully in this community, the first step that you can take is believing in Jesus and what he did here on this earth. And for some of you listening right now, maybe you've never had this conversation with God before. Maybe you've never proclaimed that. If that's you, you're here. Thank you for being here. I appreciate your interest in, in what this is all about. And if you want to like get into this relationship with Jesus today, I could help you walk, you walk you through a conversation with him, which we call prayer. So if you want to confirm your belief in Jesus today or you want to pray along with somebody here with Jesus today, and just, uh, you know, I want you to know that here at Akuho, nobody ever prays alone. So we'll have a group of people praying along with you. So if you want to confirm that belief in Jesus today or say it for the first time, uh, just, just pray this along with me. Just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe in what you did here on this earth. Today, the best way I know how, I give you my life. Amen. So y'all, we're Akuo Church. Akuo means listen. So you want to listen to the Lord here. So what I want to do is, is give us a, a few minutes to, to sit in silence and hear from him. And if you get distracted, it's okay. Just turn right back to him. Remember, sometimes the best ability is availability. So just being available to God in this moment uh, can help you connect to him moving forward. So I'm going to have you ask him a question and then just sit in silence and hopefully he can answer it. It might not be fully answered right now. It might be something you continue to pray throughout the week. But here's the question. Just between you and God, just ask him, God, who should I be generous to this week? And so I'll allow you to sit in silence for a minute or two, and then I'll come back and finish in prayer. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for your generosity towards us. Thank you for the time that you've spent with us, the grace that you continue to show us. Thank you. Jesus, will you help us see the people in our community that need help? Will you help us understand what they are going through so we can be generous to them? And Jesus, will you also allow me to accept others' generosity towards me? Jesus, thank you for everything. We love you. 
And we pray all these things in your holy and mighty and wonderful name. Amen. All right, thank, thank you so much for, for being a part of this today. Before we go, there's just a, a couple things that we have going on. Uh, you know, of course, here at Akuo, we are all about community. We, had a, we talked about a couple of events that we have coming up. Be sure and check out our uh, calendar uh, that we have, the kuo.church slash calendar, or you can see it in the Church Center app. And, and so in this time of, of prayer and in this time of of 21 days of prayer, you know, like we said, we are spending some extra time leaning into prayer. So one of the things that we are doing is we have some prayer cards set up right there next to the giving box where you can fill out a, a prayer card and then drop it in the box. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, just go ahead and uh, uh, pray about it. But the other thing is we've started our prayer team uh, that's being led by our good friend, my good friend Genevieve. And, and so she wanted to just come up here. We wanted her to come up here and just share a little bit about what this prayer team is and, and what she has going on up here. So go ahead. Yeah. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Genevieve, like he said, Gigi, some of y'all know me as Gigi. Um, basically, I'm just going to be here to pray with you guys, whatever, however that looks like. Um, doesn't have to be anything super intense, you know, maybe you have a job interview or cousin that's sick or something like that, anything at all. Um, just definitely know that God's always listening. Um, he likes all the requests, big and small. So I'll just be here going forward, um, hopefully building, um, having more people up here with me as well. Um, if any of you guys are even interested, you can definitely come and um, talk to me about that. Um, if it's like on y'all's heart to pray for people as well. Um, I feel like I should maybe just share, I kind of have been doing this for about seven years now at my past church. Um, you may see me crying a lot, don't don't mind that. Um, I just tend to get a little overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit sometimes. But again, just I'll be over here in the corner. And if anybody has any kind of prayer requests at all, big or small, um, don't be afraid to to come out. I mean, the word says two or more gathered. He's there. So that, yeah, that's it. Thank you, DJ. Also, if you're like, dang, that girl's got awesome skin, it's because she's an esthetician and she's amazing. So if you're like looking for somebody to do some skin stuff, talk with Genevieve as well, because uh, she's awesome. Um, but so we, we have all these things. We want to be praying and, 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 and leaning into prayer during this time. So like I said, we got prayer cards that you can leave in the box. We'll pick them up after service. We'll pray over them throughout the week. Or you can talk to, to Genevieve here and, and she will... Uh, um, call down heavens uh, to pray over you uh, while, you're, while you're up here, or just like pray for, you know, the small things that you have going on in your life. But yeah, she, she's great. And, and like she said, if you're interested in being a part of that team, come and chat with her today after service. Or if you like kind of started the conversation and you want to continue that conversation with her, uh, uh, again, uh, talk with her after service. So as we talk today, a uh, healthy community is one that's generous and, and, and generous with grace, generous with time, generous with resources. And so I just thank you guys that are generous with your resources here at Akuo, uh, because when you're generous here to Akuo, you're being generous to your community through Akuo. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, if, if you are interested in being generous here to Akuo, you can, uh, the practical ways to do it, drop something off in the box. You can um, go online to our website, akuo.church, or you can text to give. You can text uh, the, the name of the church, Akuo, and um, go to, uh, to seven, and the amount you want to give is the seven, number 77977. Uh, now, if you're in a place where you need help, come and see Zach or Abel after service, uh, or you can chat with me for a little bit, and um, we'll do our best to, to help you out in whatever it is that you have going on in your life. Okay, that's all that I have for you this week. Let me pray over you real quick, and, and we can head out of here. Uh, so Jesus, I, I thank you for everything. I thank you for the way that you're moving. I thank you for the way that you are showing us what community looks like. I pray that as these people move forward here this week, that they would reach out to folks, even when it's scary even when it's uncomfortable, that they would be community to people that need it during this time. And we pray that they would be able to see you moving in it, Lord, to encourage them to do it even more. Jesus, we thank you for everything. We love you, and we pray all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right, y'all, we'll see you next week.